The reason why a lot of people want to enter into flow state is because you're uber productive, you're uber creative, that endless amounts of energy while you're in it, all of the amazing things we see. But the thing with flow state is it's not a constant. Those optimal conditions realistically cannot occur all the time. But if you just untie the ego, you can always be there. It doesn't take this like rocket science of perfect recipe to get there. Welcome back to One's Journey of Unwinding the Mind and of course your daily microdose. Now tune in to the latest episode of One's Journey. I am today wearing one of my favorite smiley face sweaters. Today I want to talk about bending time. First question, have you ever experienced it? So some of you might be in like, Ashley, WTF are you talking about? Bending time. Is that like when you see the funky watches on some of those old artist pictures and the time looks all bent? No, I'm talking about that time doesn't truly exist. Time is of the illusion. If time doesn't truly exist and time is of the illusion, When we're in this process of obtaining truth and coming more and more from the Holy Spirit's belief system and realizing that we're not actually in the dream, but we're outside of the dream, then why would time have a hold on us? It won't, and it wouldn't, and it shouldn't, and it won't. And along that journey, even long before that journey, you may have experienced that. And again, these videos are my thoughts and interpretations, and I have a grand one. So interesting enough, one of the ways Patrick and I really met each other was my first question on Bumble was, what is the most recent book or podcast you have consumed? And he answered flow. Well, flow state at that time was not the craze it is today, and you had to be very intentional to find a book and be reading a book on flow state. Long story short, that was a huge commonality between us. And the reason why I bring that up is because I have also done quite a bit of research in flow state and loved flow state. I loved the concept of attempting to achieve it every day. I loved how it was used in black ops and all the different things. But I read a lot into it and I did a lot of journeying there and understanding But the cool thing is that I really understood how to activate flow state in the manner in which they taught. So flow state, you really had to have the perfect criteria, the perfect recipe to achieve it. It was really about partaking in a task that you enjoyed, but was difficult enough to challenge you, but not too difficult to frustrate you. It was like this whole combination and having the right atmosphere around you that really aligned and then flow state is what you entered when all of a sudden time didn't exist anymore say you were surrounded by people you had no like understanding of them you just were in you were in the zone a lot of people might say you were in the zone and just really laser focus in on what you were doing and it just all encompassed into it and and the reason why a lot of people want to enter into flow state is because you're uber productive, you're uber creative, that endless amounts of energy while you're in it, all of the amazing things we seek. But the thing with flow state is it's not like a constant. Those optimal conditions realistically cannot occur all the time. And I never figured out a way, and maybe there is, um, to move from task to task while in flow state and maintain that flow state. It was more like task oriented, or at least that's where I was at. But the cool thing is that when I started really understanding this journey and experiencing coming from spirit, viewing through the Holy Spirit's belief system, standing in the love and the light, I was like, damn, this feels an awful lot like flow state. And in flow state, time doesn't exist or it feels like it doesn't exist. So when people say that, it's because they tend to look at a clock and not much time has passed and they've gotten a shit ton done. When you are fully in spirit and coming from the Holy Spirit's belief system and not acknowledging any of the ego, that happens too. You will all of a sudden look at the clock and let's say it should have taken 40 minutes to get to where you are and maybe 15 minutes passed. 
and you are to your destination. It's not because you were going 100 miles an hour. It's because you had entered the dreamer state, that you are the dreamer. You left the illusion. You were outside of it. It's a constant state of being in the right mind. And I think with flow state was like an intentional activation of the right mind, but without knowing they were activating the right mind. That's why it wasn't consistent because it was like setting up the things just right to enter into the Holy Spirit's belief system. But in fact, if you just untie the ego, you can always be there. And it doesn't take this like rocket science of perfect recipe to get there. I want to talk about the movie Soul. The movie Soul, it's a Disney movie. If you haven't seen it, where they go on the ship is essentially like this place. Or, or I think the soul was referring to flow state, but maybe they were referring to the place of coming from the Holy Spirit. And there was people just like totally in the zone in there. They were practicing music, creating art, and they were oblivious to the world around them because the world around them didn't exist because the whole, it only exists in the ego from a place of the ego other ways that we intentionally activate this. And I think this video is kind of thrown off bending time, but it all wraps itself around because bending time is a piece of this is doing a float tank. You don't feel your body anymore. You're separated from your body, but bending back to bending time. The first time I truly experienced it was probably a couple months after Patrick and I started dating, we had a day where we came from Tampa and we went to St. Pete. We went grocery shopping. We went to the market. We signed up for sailing. Mind you, it's like 30, 40 minute drive both ways. We also grabbed a coffee. Like we did all of these things and we were just fully present in the moment. We weren't thinking about the past or the future. Nobody was in pain, focused on their body. Nobody was focused on seeking salvation one another. So we are really coming from the Holy Spirit's belief system and literally like two hours had passed by and we had returned back to Tampa and we had done all of those things in St. Pete. That should have taken like five hours at least between everything we did and the drive time. And so then I started to pay more attention to this. Like, oh my gosh, we're bending time. But at this point, I was really in the state of still thinking I'm my own little God before I really ventured into the understanding of truly what was going on. And another time happened, I was leading three women, me and a friend were leading three women through a psychedelic trip, a very intentional psychedelic trip for healing and understanding. And we we're sitting there, trip sitting them. And I read, I think 20 or 30 pages in my book and looked down and only 15 minutes had passed. And mind you, this was a normal size book, but because the room was so clear and everybody there was just really in spirit, we bent time. And the reason why you can bend time is because time doesn't exist. Have you seen the movie, The Matrix, when Neo is going to see the Oracle lady and he's sitting in the waiting room and there's this little person, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy, sitting on the ground, I can't remember, and they're staring at a spoon, and the spoon is like just drooping down. And so Neo, he like tries to do it, and they're like, no, you don't try to bend the spoon. You realize the spoon doesn't exist. See, same thing. So that was a direct representation, I believe, it was one of those hidden meanings of bending time. When you realize it doesn't exist is when it no longer impacts you. And again, then all of a sudden you have um, endless amounts of time. And am I saying I live in this state all the time? No, because I think I'd be ready to set my body aside and go home. But it is really cool when you experience it because it's like one of those winks of, ah, that's what it feels like to come from a place of the Holy Spirit. When you bend time is because your thought process is coming through a place of right-minded thinking and like Neo in Matrix and that little being that was sitting there with a spoon, it's not about focusing on bending time. It's about realizing time doesn't exist. And that's when it happens. 
Again, it needs to be coming from a place of the Holy Spirit. Essentially, my theory is that the more we do this, the more we can just live in flow state without some special recipe that we've got to mix just right in order to activate and to sit in. And not to mention, we can move from task to task and still be in a place of flow state because time doesn't exist. Time is of the illusion and where we're going is outside of the illusion. Yeah, our body will still appear here, but technically we won't be in the illusion. I would love to hear any times that you have bent time uh, or feel like you have or think you have or have stories of other people bending time. And as always, remember you are worth it. So grateful for you. Have an amazing rest of your day.